Good afternoon. I'm hoping you've had a fantastic uh, week so far and um, you're almost getting ready for the weekend. <laughs> it's Thursday today. And um, yeah, if you're watching this part of the show, which we're about to record live on Facebook, you're watching the replay. So I advise that, um, you know, you type the number two so that we understand the kind of audience that's watching in with us. But I noticed some people are tuning in. Paul Harris, Raz Crowley, Christine is also in. So it looks like we better get started here. I'm really, really appreciative of the people that are constantly following my stuff and um, enjoying the content that I'm putting out there. It really helps to motivate me. So Paul Harris, today I'm going to be talking about something that might be of interest to you. We're talking about sales and how, um, you know, conversion is the way to go and actually selling your products is what uh, customers are actually waiting for you to do, even though we are afraid to sell in and of ourselves. I see Emma has just tuned in. Thank you so much. Whatever part you're going to watch, I hope you're going to enjoy the show. All right. My name is Prosper Tarovinga for those that are watching this for the first time. And I want you to know that I viscerally believe that if you're going to be running an online business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. And if you're going to be um, you know, running that business, you should also be able to create for and relate to an audience um, that is willing and able to pay for your products and services. So that's the reason why every single day at 2 p.m. AST without a shadow of doubt, me, look, um, you know, Paul, everybody else comes and we hang around here so we can discuss ways to help you earn more money with less struggle. And today we're going to be talking about one part that actually um, brings a lot of happiness to a lot of families, which is the conversion part, the sales aspect of your business, where you are farming for your clients instead of you hunting, where you're solving their problems and just doing a bit of online marketing here and there, putting out calls to action and measuring what's actually working and what's not working right there. But I'm going to be dwelling a whole lot um, on, um, on actual selling. Do you know what I mean? Because um, every single day we sit around here, we talk about your avatars, we talk about creating your ideal client, putting them in a, some sort of a sales funnel, creating, a, a, you know, content for them, you know, putting out websites, doing SEO for them and all and providing them whatever information you can be providing them. But if you don't know the art and the science behind actually converting them into paying customers, then you're never going to be successful. All right. So um, this is something that is also a big, big, big issue for me, um, you know, when it comes to sales, because I'm all of the give, 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 and I'm not, um, you know, the one who's eagerly happy to receive. But I've been doing a lot of work on myself and, you know, listening to other people and figuring out exactly where I am going wrong. And um, I've noticed that there's quite a lot um, that has to be unpacked. First of all, um, you know, in my psyche, and that this also affects a lot more other people, that the way you were raised, the way your relationship with money, your understanding of wealth, your understanding of people that are in position, in power, if you grew up afraid of people that had some sort of an authority, um, it's really, really uh, something that you really need to sit down and have a, a look at and, and, and actually consider. Cedar. Is this helping me or is it deterring me on my mission to have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable? So it's all to do with your past, how you were raised, your relationships and the people that are really close to you, how they dealt with money. Um, it could be your parents, it could be um, your father, how they treated or how they gave you money or did they give you uh, money and then give you a guilt trip after that. Sometimes you might not want the bag that comes along with the money and you will find yourself when when you are about to close that sale or open a relationship with somebody you find yourself uh, dragging because your self-esteem is either telling you money is wrong right so we're gonna try and dwell around that subject I'm not the 
the expert when it comes to things like that, but there's some things that would actually help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable if you let go of your preconceived conceptions about money, all right? First of all, like I said, you could create avatars, you could find your ideal client, but if you can't speak in their own language, if you can't make them understand that you've got the value that they need in order for them to make a purchase from you, that also is going to waste a lot of your time and waste a lot of their time and none of you guys are going to benefit from that transaction. All the times that we we are out there, we are always trying to look for something that makes us look good in front of an audience. But are we asking what exactly does the audience need? How exactly do they define that problem? What exactly are they paying us to provide to them? So if you could ask yourself a question, what does sales actually mean to you? I want you to maybe type it in the comments there and let me know what you actually can define sales um, you know, within your business or what do you consider a transaction that has occurred um, you know, with whatever it is that you sell there. So I want you to just type in your definition of sales or um, selling um, you know, so that I get to understand the people that are watching this show right now. I see Gretel has just tuned in. How was your trip to Adelaide, my love? Hope to get to see you, um, you know, um, a little bit soon when you, when we come around to yours or when you come around here. Okay, so selling really is the most important step, all right, in your in your day to day activities of your business. Because if you're not selling, then that means you're not creating the income that will then result in the wealth that will make your business profitable. If you're not selling, that means you're not providing value to your audience in that they are happy to reciprocate with either their wallet or with either their credit cards, whichever way, um, you know, um, you exchange value for whatever it is that you produce there. Now, Kristen says selling is helping people get the solutions they need. Absolutely. Some people treat selling as if it's the worst thing to ever happen in humankind. You know, because it's, it's what is happening around us. Every second person is bringing up um, you on your mobile phone or on your office phone and wanting to sell you, um, you know, a product that they think you might need without them having asked you any questions to see if you actually need that product or not. You know, so once you change your perception around selling once you change the perspective around what it actually means to have a transaction with somebody else you will notice that you will actually feel the load off of your shoulders and you will start making a whole lot more sales than you were or you are going to be making in the next six to twelve months now emma says sales are not about convincing they should be magnetic and neutral Sales is about showing your value and inviting them to pay for it. Absolutely. Wherever value is involved and if you want people to actually value your commodities, they have to pay for it. If people do not, they studies around, um, you know, giving to orphans or to people that are less fortunate in Africa or third world countries. The more you give something for free without them putting in um, a bit of effort on their part, they won't value that service. So if you actually value what you are putting out there in the market, if you think that it is undoubtedly the best service out there, you should ask for some sort of compensation for it. And if your audience are the people that are actually willing and able to, 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 to um, you know, get or get the privilege of that uh, value, then they will be more than happy to pay for it. Half of the time we have this fear in and of itself, you know, first of all, it's the fear of the unknown, fear of rejection and fear of, you know, being, um, I mean, I mean, fear of the unknown, right? Which is if I present my work to these people or try and sell it to them, then they might just think, uh, uh, you, 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 you're already playing this record in your head, which means nothing to anybody else. Maybe the person that you're trying to reach out to is just having a bad day. Maybe the person that you're trying to reach out to doesn't have the money. So that means you haven't done your homework in figuring out, is this person willing and able to actually make this purchase? 
All right. So there's a few things that you really want to do in order for you to be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And one of them is actually selling your value into the marketplace. I see Nick Leonandes has just tuned in. Thank you so much, brother, for tuning in. You know, we are paid in direct proportion to the value we bring into the marketplace. You might be giving in a lot of value. You might be a valuable member of society. You might be a valuable member to your church. But are you valuable enough for somebody to want to pay, um, you know, for your services? So you need to also have that in, in, in check and figuring out, am I doing things that people are willing and able to actually pay for? And in order for me to reach out to them and say, hey, listen, this is what I've got. This is how much it's going to cost. And this is how it's going to help you. Now, Kristen says, not about, um, not about if they can pay, but if they are willing to pay. Yes, that's why I said willing and able. And then some people have the money, but they can't see the value. Then they're not your customers. I'll be talking about those people as well. And then Kristen says, it is up to us to help them see the value. And Nicole says, live long. Absolutely. Right. So half of the times, we really, really, really need to figure out something. What we think might be valuable might not be value in the eyes of our customers. I'll give you a specific example that would actually show you that we need to be seeing things in exactly the way our customers see them. Every single time I walk past, um, you know, a dentist here in Manda where I live, there's a couple of shops and there's a dental practice over there. And they've got a sign outside that says new patients welcome. That's a good sign. It's colorful. It's got all their branding, et cetera, et cetera. But they are not speaking to the right person they want to attract. How many times would you consider yourself a patient when you're going to the, denti to the dentist? How many times would you call yourself a patient? So they are not actually associating the way their, their target audience wants to be called or knows off of themselves in order for them to say, wait a minute, this sign is talking to me. So there's things like that that might be happening in our messaging, which then when we do present our work, our audience is just saying, wait a minute, you were not talking to me all along. So like that sign that says new patients welcome, I would not walk in there because I'm not a patient. I'm a person with a sore tooth. So if you speak to me, Mr. Dentist, in a way that I actually understand that you are able to save me or help me or deliver me from my pain, I'm more than happy to pay for that. All right. So you should really be looking at small things like that. And when it then comes to, um, you know, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes we are just bluntly afraid to sell, you know? You know, right now, if I can just walk you through the whole sales, um, you know, understanding of, of, of so that I can maybe enlighten you to see that everything we have to do is some sort of a sales process in and of itself. Right now, what I'm doing right now is trying to sell you a concept. You watching this video here, you've probably been sold to think that maybe there's going to be value at the end of this show. You know, you may have heard of the title salesperson before every, ah, I don't know what just felt. Every one of us is a salesperson in and of its, in and of themselves. And it's imperative to actually polish up on, on, on your skills of being a better communicator so that you can speak in terms of what your customer refers themselves to so that they understand your message. So you want to become a better communicator in order for you to win in business and in life. And everything that we're doing is some sort of sales process going on there. So whether you're running a company, whether you're currently employed in one, or there's a good chance that at some point throughout your day, you're going to be doing some sort of sales related work, you know? And all of us, regardless of your job title or what it is that you serve to your audience or whatever influence you have to your, um, to your tribe, if you have one, we do some type of sales, but we also have some limiting beliefs because we don't want to be perceived as, as, as taking advantage of other people. 
But guess what? Um, Emma says, selling your kids why it's good to go to bed on time. <laughs> exactly, for parents. We spend a significant time trying to tell, sell our kids, you know, even going to bed or making their bed, you know, or to do their chores or to actually study um, if they have an upcoming test. So all of that is selling. But why can we not translate that into the monetary bit that then helps us be, do, and have a happier existence and also, you know, uh, families that are, 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 are happy? We are always selling ideas. But then why is it that we stop dead in our tracks when we actually have to do the things that moves us forward, um, you know, in our goals and also in, 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 in moving the family or, or the ones that we love? You know, as a, as a startup or as a business person, you spend a significant time trying to sell like what um, Emma says, selling people your ideas or of your new products or your new organization. Or if you're big enough to get investors, you know, and if you're a CEO of a company, you have to sell the job to your employees. So it's always selling, selling, selling. So what is wrong about selling then if it is helping other people be, do and have a happier existence? Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong in helping your kids, um, you know, um, be better human beings? Is there anything wrong in selling on your kids to be uh, polite to other people? Is there anything wrong with that? So you should also put that same mindset and say sales is the oxygen of your business for growth and success. The more you are afraid to put yourself out there and knock on doors or maybe if your business and tells you to pick up the phone, Without it, they eventually won't be a business. Grand opening, grand closing. You know what I mean? So it's impossible to grow without going out and selling your products or shaking hands or picking up the phone or talking to people online like this. Because yes, we, we all hide behind our websites. We all hide behind our blog posts, our Facebook videos, but we are actually not selling. And that's the reason why we're not growing. You know, maybe you don't know how to do it. Maybe you don't know why it's so important for you to bring out your values out there. Is it fear? Is it, um, is it the fear of rejection? Are you afraid that people would reject you? There is 7 billion people out there in the world. If you can only convince five of those 7 billion people to buy your stuff, I think you will live happily ever after. I, I think it's a minimum five for everybody else. You know, I think your, 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 what do you call it? You, you only just need five people and then the rest is profit. You know? <laughs> the rest is profit. I don't know what you sell, but how can you type in the comments there? How many sales do you need to make in order for you to break even? Can you please type in there? Just just to break even at least. How many sales do you need to make uh, either monthly, yearly, or periodically for you to be able to break even? You know? So if you just really look at it like that, you don't have to sell to the whole world. Just sell to the people that are willing and able to buy your commodities. Because the more you are hiding in your cocoon, fearing rejection, the more that money is passing you by. You know? The more that money is passing you by. Because our limbic brain is designed to be afraid of the unknown. Alright? Because we used to live in the caves. We used to live out there in the open. If you are rejected by your tribe, that means you have no protection, no homeostasis, and no people that will help you get food. But these days, what would you be, what would be the worst thing that could happen to you? Good day, Scott Keating. How's it going, my brother? Hope you're having a fantastic day right there. So that's the only thing that we really are afraid of. Maybe, maybe it is fear of actually being successful. Now, Emma says, eight clients a month means a great lifestyle for me and my family. Look at that. You don't need 
500 or whatever amount of leads that you have in your listing. Just find those eight people and create for and relate for them so that they, they, they talk about you, you sell to them more, they buy your stuff and they're always happy with you. That's all you need because some people get paralyzed thinking, oh, I've got to sell, I've got to do this. Just figure out what your numbers are and then just go out and look for those eight people, those 10 people for Luke, um, you know, Moroni. And look, you mentioned something about communication. Always lead with questions because if you're going to be helping people with your service or with your, um, um, with your, with your service or with your products, you really need to be asking them questions. And some of the best communicators that I've ever, ever, ever come across, they always lead with, uh, with questions. And the more you are asking questions, the more you're gi being given ammunition in order to help that person. And there's this statement that whoever has asked the question is in control. So if you're afraid of not being in control, continuously ask questions up until you get enough information to relay back to them and then see how you can solve their problem. You know, I've, I've maybe spoken a lot about the importance of questions and, you know, it, it certainly applies to becoming a better communicator and a salesperson. Because the more you can bring out what the person doesn't know they need, then you're creating that void. And the only thing that's going to fill it up is your service or your product. So in your next sales interaction with somebody else, try to lead the conversation with great questions. You already know what your product does. So just do your research and then come prepared about them and have great questions ready in order for them to open up. Because as humans, we are just designed to answer questions from childhood. Why are you doing that? I don't know. Ask them, why are you doing what you're doing? How can I help you? They are pre, you know, disposed to answer you back. So when you ask good questions, like what Luke Moroni is saying about communication, you're doing two things, you know, that will help you in the long run. Number one, you're actually displaying a sense of humility, um, which will always serve you in a positive way. You know, people like to buy from other people. So the more you ask questions, you are showing that person that you are invested in what they need. You like them and people always want to do business with those and then they trust you and then they, 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 they want to do business with you. And number two about that part is you will start to receive the key answers that you normally not have been able to find out because nobody's going to tell you that something is wrong with them unless you ask. So there's nothing more powerful on both sides than having great questions that are being asked. And so you want to lead with questions and during every interaction here on, make sure you have the last question no matter what. You know why? Because the person who's asking the questions is in control. And that's why we then become afraid because we lose control from our customer. And then pretty much from then on, you want to start changing the perception of, 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 of selling. Selling is not reserved to those snack oil salespeople that come with a briefcase and sell things that are not, um, you know, legit or people that are squindling people out of their money. You are legitimately going out there helping people. Of course, you know, likes, hugs, shares, they don't pay the mortgage. Trust me, I've tried. I went on to Commonwealth and I was like, hey guys, look at my Facebook right now. You know what I mean? It's... Um, yeah, we've got 40, 41,000 likes here. Yeah, this, this will convert. They don't care. You know, I can't tell you how many people I've encountered that have got nothing good to say about sales. But that's how business is done. That's how politics is, is, is won. So my mission today is to make sales great again. Thank you so much, Emma, for tuning in. Hope this was valuable for you. You know? You see, sometimes some people that don't understand why they're not being successful. You're not selling. You're not selling. You know, and they can't understand why anyone would want to do, um, you know, you know, they think that selling is dehumanizing themselves. 
Because when somebody calls them and, and, and is trying to sell them something, you know what they respond? They say, can you not get a better job? And then automatically they're already thinking that everybody thinks the same if they are, um, you know, going out there and selling to them. So in order for you to be a success in sales, you have to change your perception because you are not selling, you're solving problems, you're helping people. And as entrepreneurs, that's what we're here for. We're here to serve, to help, and to actually, you know, help people be, do, and have a happier existence. So instead of thinking of it as a negative, actually start viewing sales in a totally different light. Sales is about serving people. It's about helping. Good day, Tough. How are you doing, my man? Hope you're having a fantastic day. You know? And if the people are willing and able, then guess what? You're going to be successful, and we're going to be high-fiving you all the way. In sales, you only help, you, you, you only succeed if you're helping other people to succeed. Because it's quite difficult for you to be successful as a salesperson if your product or service is, is, is shit. You know? And Paul says, when I first started four years back, I was crap at talking to people because I was afraid of what they would think. But the day changed my thoughts. People fell from the sky. I stopped putting all that stuff onto you. Because that's a lot of unnecessary baggage. And thank you so much for that, Paul. You know? Because once you understand that you're here to serve people, you become obsessed and becoming the master of solving problems. Because let me tell you something. People are always trying to run away from whatever pain they might be going through. So if your product is the bridge between where they are and where they want to be and if they're willing and able to pay for that thing voila you've got yourself a winner you know and this once you become obsessed about really trying to solve people's problems it becomes a total game changer in your business right now your business is not growing because you're not selling so become obsessed in, in solving people's problems, providing real value in the marketplace because you are paid in direct proportion to the value you bring into the marketplace. Don't be afraid. And maybe you are afraid of success. Maybe that's it. Explore that. Maybe you really are afraid of success. Um, who was that lady? Um, oh, somebody help me here. What's her name? Mar Marianne Will Williamson, is it? Is it the, the, the lady who, who, who wrote about um, our deepest fears? When, when he says our deepest fears is not that we are inadequate or our deepest fears is that we are powerful beyond measure, you know? It is in our light and not in our darkness that, uh, that most frightens us. A lot of people are afraid of, of their success. We are all meant to shine. And it's not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. So as you let your own light shine, you, you are unconsciously giving other people permission to do the same. You know? So as you liberate, as we're liberated from, from, from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So if you are not showing people that you can actually help them by actually helping them, and giving them an opportunity for that through selling them your, your services. I don't think you are that selfish. I do not absolutely think you are that selfish. Because as you have noticed. Hey, good day, Darren Burgess. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Yes, it's Marianne Williamson. Because I know the most successful people, they don't look at it as a sale. Do you know what I mean? They look at it as an opportunity to solve a problem. So if you become obsessed with solving people's problems out there, you will be a success. How are you, Stephen Seddon? But then maybe the problem is what you're selling is not solving any problems. And that's the reason why you don't want to put it out there because your own soul is telling you it's not important. When you become really, really obsessed in helping other people be, do, and have a happier existence, selling will come naturally to you. Because you understand and you do know that people actually value what they have paid for. So you're only doing people a favor by asking for a bit of compensation for whatever it is that you're putting out there. 
So you're gonna have to start looking for ways to double your value, and you're bringing forth, um, you know, um, you know that same value into the marketplace because we are paid in direct proportion to the value we put out there in the marketplace. And Paul says exactly finding people's pain and giving them the solution. Absolutely. So the marketplace is open for people that have goods and services that can help other people be, do, and have. And when you start solving people's problems, you become known for that uh, that thing as a as becoming a problem solver. And when and before people people don't label you as a salesperson, they label you as as a fixer, as a problem solver. Your business will transform if you just go past your own ego or whatever limiting beliefs that you might um, be harboring right now. So you need to go in a meeting with yourself. Ask yourself, why are you afraid of money? Why are you afraid of success? Why are you afraid of accepting, you know, a higher level of existence that is that you're capable of? Why are you selling yourself short? Because becoming a more polished business person or a salesperson, you know, you're, you're working on your communication skills and you're actually helping more people in the process and you're succeeding in your own business. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Even though you may not have the title salesperson, you are still selling. But now you've got a different perception of selling. You are actually solving people's problems. Now, if you're not making money this year, Ask yourself, am I actually needed in the marketplace? Am I actually solving problems? And whatever opinions you have about money, are they justified? Because you're your own limit. You're your own stopper to your greatness. All right. I hope this show was valuable. um, Because for me as well, I had to really go through that Because I was also just coming in from the perception, oh, I'm coming from a poor country. Oh, we don't have that much money. But all that was hogwash. It was all there. So I'm really hoping that this show was beneficial to you so that you too can actually have a business that is profitable and you actually enjoy working in it. Now, tomorrow is a Friday. So it's the Ask and Prosper show. You know what that means. It's an hour of us sitting down you can ask whatever questions you might have pertaining to digital marketing um you know as long as they're pg rated i will try and endeavor to answer them all right so if i can be of help to you um and then sell you on the ideas and my products a little bit later on let me know in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day and go out there and really really sell and solve people's problems because that's what you're meant to be doing right Bye for now.